Turn now to the latest from Ferguson. The curfew there lifted overnight, but the protests and violence not ending. President Obama has dispatched Attorney General Eric Holder to Missouri. He's going to, to Missouri. He's going to be there tomorrow. And this morning, we're hearing from a friend of the officer who shot Michael Brown. ABC Steve Osinsami is on the scene right now. Good morning, Steve. Good morning to you, George. The start of school here has been delayed yet another week. At night, the police here have a new tactic with demonstrators forcing them to keep moving, no standing still. 31 people were arrested last night alone, and police say many of them were from out of state. Overnight, the sound of smoke bombs and the smell of tear gas filled the night over Ferguson. Police set off ear-piercing sirens against the crowds after they say rocks and bottles came flying. In the dark at night, at least two people shot. Not a single bullet fired by officers, despite coming under heavy attack. The curfew lifted, but police in riot gear in full effect. They arrested 31 people, including some demonstrators who wouldn't keep moving. The state's governor sent in the Missouri National Guard, troops with guns on the roofs of grocery stores, their armored vehicles guarding the police staging area. Hands up! Hands up! Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Overnight protests broke out in New York City and Atlanta, too, all calling for justice more than a week after the shooting of Michael Brown. And this morning, a first, we're now hearing from a good friend of Ferguson City Police Officer Darren Wilson, who shot and killed the unarmed teen. I have exchanged text messages with him just as of a few days ago. I can tell that he's struggling. You know, I can tell that this is really hard on him. The friend is so concerned for his own safety, he asked us to conceal his face for this interview. He wouldn't speak about the shooting, but says he and Wilson played hockey for years, and he never saw his friend fight. He's a really quiet guy. He is just really well-mannered. He is very respectful. Prosecutors here say they could present their case to a grand jury as early as this week to determine if there will be charges. George. Okay, Steve, thanks. Let's talk to ABC's chief legal affairs da anchor Dan Abrams about that. And this grand jury, when it meets, is going to get two very different stories they have to sort through. Uh, that's right. Remember, less than half of the cases in this county ever go to a grand jury. You don't have to take it to the grand jury. But this allows the prosecutor, with these sort of warring narratives, to say, I didn't make the decision, they did, the grand jurors did, the people did. But of course, how vigorously the prosecutor presents this case is everything. There's no defense attorney there. It's just the prosecutor presenting a case to these grand jurors. If the DA wants an indictment, he'll get an indictment. If the DA doesn't want an indictment or has questions, that could be a very different thing. One key piece of evidence already out there is this autopsy. How critical is it? Absolutely crucial. The autopsy and the ballistics to me are, are essential in this case. Why? Because if the weapon was fired from a distance, if these six shots were taken from far away and all of the bullets hit him in the front, that's going to be a very tough spot for the police officer to be in. If, however, this was fired at close range, the police officer is going to say there was a struggle. We were fighting for the gun. And so that becomes an absolutely essential question. And, and again, that's why it's so important how the DA presents this case to the grand At jury. At the same time, you've got the attorney general saying he's going to pursue a civil rights investigation on a parallel but separate track. Yeah, but I, I don't think that that's going to turn into anything. This is a state case. Uh, every time there's a controversial case, uh, the federal authorities come in and say, we're looking at it. We're investigating, we're on top of it, and I believe that all to be the case. But the reality is, this is a state case. That's where this case is going to be focused, and I think the feds are just watching very, very carefully what happens. And the happens. state will go first. Oh, absolutely. Okay. absolutely. I, I don't think they're going to be, I don't th again, I don't think the feds are going to be where the, the action is going to be in this case. Okay, Dan yeah. Adams, thanks very much.